I thought quite a decent draft from Impunity here would be ban the Black Feather, bait Elite Eight to pick Fox, then Impunity first pick Alpha, then second ban Rhyme. Then they have a perfect draft, they still got captains they can pick, but they've gone for this draft instead, leaving Lyra and Lance open. Sorry, Lyra and Arden open, so I think Lyra is most likely going to be picked up by Impunity now. There's no one else they necessarily need to take, because um, they don't want to first pick Alpha now, because then they just... Uh, was it Brenny Sports don't have to pick any kind of hard carry, and that would be a pretty good counter. They could, they might second pick it depending on what, uh, so depending on what uh, Elite Eight do decide to ban. And so I think Impunity's pick, I think Lyra makes the most sense. Yeah, it didn't rhyme, or actually Lyra there, there you go. They have on the next pick as well. And with regards to this current draft that I'm looking at, it is roughly similar to the draft they had when they were up against Jtrex Inferno. Their entire team comp will be banning out the Vox, picking out something along the Lyras, if not an Alpha, banning out the Prime, and re regardless, regardless of whatever bans coming out from the side of Elite 8, they can just instantly just lock in the Alpha for themselves, after which, unless of course Elite 8 will ban out the Alpha, because we know Elite 8 not quite afraid of Alpha, they have got, you know, official highs, it's very good on the Batiste, maybe can pull out some miracle with that Batiste, but Impunity, mm -hmm. we might just see a Gwen coming through. Yeah, we might, I think that's quite unlikely for Impunity, there's still Kestrel open, there's still Blackfeather has been let through this entire draft. So Impunity perhaps baiting the Alpha Band so they can pick Lyra Blackfeather. That would be a really smart draft from them. Uh, although I do think if both are left open, Impunity, yeah, both left open. So Alpha and Blackfeather are both open. I think Impunity will take the Blackfeather as a priority uh, because then they have their laner who's not countered by Alpha. And they just have to last pick a jungler who's not countered by Alpha, such as Batiste or such as a... Um... No, but they're going to go for Alpha themselves. So now... There's uh, Impunity have got, sorry, Elite 8 on the A side. They've got to pick something to counter the Alpha and Blackfeather. In short, I think that's the, the really the only draft they can do that will work. Weapon Kestrel, not good against Alpha. And not great against Lyra either because she can outheal you. And so I think Batiste is a great pick or, um, or I still think Ozo could work well. Ozo definitely work well. If not, then like you mentioned, Blackfeather is still on the table. What, Elite 8 or Impunity? not prioritizing at all i mean even if you do run a cp black feather it will work very very well but then not, of course not again to alpha but we do see <laughs> a petal <laughs> what? Uh, well, i don't know why you're laughing so so oddly but i i kind of agree because petal is not a good pick against alpha like at all if it's crystal petal alpha gets three core charge stacks off the manions and will kill her with a prime directive if it's Weapon Petal, Alpha gets three core charge stacks off the Manions and will kill her with a Prime Directive. So, it's going to be a Crystal Petal. Try and counter this Alpha. That's very risky. Yeah, I, it will be a Crystal... Ah! Okay, it will be a Crystal Petal trying to counter the Alpha. And as you mentioned, a core charge will definitely take like two or three Manions down. Or, you know, Alpha can easily just build core charge and then as you mentioned again if he if, if alpha gets a three-man prime directive it will be a lot of damage if not then just immediately just delete a petal from the foe sending her you know straight back to base straight back to respawn and have to reset all of her but then impunity impunity Ooh. taking out that baron Wow. That is a, just in case uh, Elite Eight decide to go for a Crystal Black Feather Jungle in a lane weapon petal, Impunity have gone, okay, let's go Baron, and now late game, Baron destroys Petal. There's no question that Baron is better than Petal once you get to late game, because he has uh, just as long range, and he has more damage in a straight, uh, straight 1v1. And so that's a smart pick. Baron did get a nice weapon power ratio buff back to when he was broken before, but his uh, defenses have been reduced more than other heroes. Baron was tankier than all other ranged carries, than, tankier than everyone else. Now he's back in uh, line. He's back even with all the other ranged weapon power carries. So if they go Crystal Petal lane weapon Black Feather, that's a better decision from Impunity because that means they can try do a snowball tactic with weapon with a crystal petal, and try and stop Baron being able to fire up with a weapon black feather. But the weapon petal lane and crystal jungle black feather just seems countered in both ways. Weapon petals, they're completely countered by Alpha and Baron, and crystal black feather is never really a carry that's going to win you games. Well, definitely. I mean, crystal. Pe 
Crystal Black Feather is very unlike the weapon counterpart, um, the weapon build counterpart for Black Feather. Not a surefire way to actually just win games. And I personally think the weapon Black Feather will just do so much better into a Baron because you can just stick to him. Whereas a Crystal Crystal Black Feather, yes, you have you have a similar kit, you have the same exact kit, but a lot of a kit it works on burst. You need a Shattered Glass, you need a Broken Myth. And I think even in 2.9.1, the changes made to Broken Myth, I don't think it is quite as um, effective anymore. So thus, I think the Serpent's Mask into the Breaking Point, into the Bone Saw or Tornado Trigger will work the best against a Baron. And then you have your, your CP Patel for somehow, right, try to snowball against this Alpha. But overall, looking at the draft coming through, I really like the draft coming up from Impunity. They have got the early game sustained. They have got a soft CC with a bright ball work. And yeah, true, Arden can throw down Gauntlet, trapping Alpha within, you know, with uh, that of um, Black Feather and Petal. Mm. But you don't really want to be in the same room with Alpha. Yeah, that, Alpha that's the real problem, isn't it? Because Alpha wants to stay in the room, stay in the same room as you. And yeah. Baron has. Level 8 overdriven jump jets can block one gauntlet, reflex block the echoed one, and then Baron's outside of both gauntlets. No matter how no matter how well you place them, Baron will be able to get out of both the gauntlets. So I think, yeah, if, as long as Impunity, just don't get snowballed by this Crystal Petal. Allow them scale, themselves to scale to late game. They should be absolutely fine in this, in this draft. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Impunity looking very, very strong. And unless, of course... In attack, he manages to run away from... And that was calculated, I think you'll say. So what Blue did was he got three core charge stacks on the minions, was level two because of a, a well a well executed rotation with Death View. And then he had three core charge stacks, saw official hind, prime directive with three core charge stacks, massive damage. Blue he started with the two crystal bits start, and that was uh, well played by Blue I think the official hind should have probably dodged that, maybe with a trampoline. But yeah, really, really good start for Impunity. We said they needed to scale to late game, and they're already winning the early. Yeah, I definitely think that Impunity, they have the better draft, to be honest. They've got, they went and picked up the Baron, who hasn't seen so much light this patch. Like, not many people picking up the Baron, but Baron still being a very good hero into this patch, I believe, with the changes, as you said, reverting him back to a... The, where he used to be a few patches ago, but it seems like a lot of the time they're just better picks otherwise uh, to go for. But in yeah, this think, case... Mm. Uh, uh, yeah, in this case, that box was banned out as a first ban, actually by the side of Impunity. More so, they didn't want to give that over into the first pick for uh, the side of Elite Eight. Yeah, that's definitely Baron's a, a nice last pick on B side. It's not something to get. I really never want to get Baron on A side unless the enemy has gone for two carries uh, on B side first as first and second pick, because he is pretty easily countered just by something like Koshka. Early game aggression, snowball him quite easily. And Crystal Petal feels like she should do the same, but it's just it doesn't work because Petal requires on Munions and Baron has splash damage which is gonna take them out pretty quickly. Yeah, and as long as Queasy's up there in the lane with the Imperial Sigil, there's only going to be such small windows for Elite Eight to act upon and we see now the Imperial Sigil already back up after previously using it to help Def Q get out of that fight and it's just going to work well with the sustain overall and when you're going up against a weapon black feather that also makes a lot of sense that you want to be able to help match out that sustain uh, although Lyra being the first pickup for the side of impunity shows they were already thinking of going some kind of team comp with that Lyra and uh, quite comfortable on it yeah I think that the uh, Lyra was a really smart pick it works well with the Baron in the end it works well with most heroes because being able to survive in lane after you take an unfavorable engage is important uh, in, in this patch because the Book of, of Eulogy has got nerfed quite heavily and healing in general has been nerfed for quite a few patches in a row. So having Lyra just to keep you, keep you able to survive after maybe you make a mistake, maybe you overextend or get ganked as DefQ is just staying back to make sure that doesn't happen, it's really important that and really helpful to have a Lyra. Yeah, and you've got to always look at the whole kit of Lyra there with the Bright Bulwark uh, when played well. Uh, you can really negate a lot of the engages coming out from the ability, uh, coming out from the enemies, waste a lot of their abilities. That's what I was looking to say there. Uh, and also using it to try lock down certain enemies at times, as we almost saw. 
uh, Lyra trying to just stop item from getting away, but they won't be able to do so. We did see Def Q, however, able to make it back to base, picking up that Serpent's Mask as a first item with the Swift Shooter and Minion's Foot in the back of his pocket for a bit more damage. Yeah, that's a, that's a Baron build that I've seen before in Southeast Asia, where you don't go Solar Blade first, you go first item Serpent's Mask, then build as a Baron normally would. So then you go uh, into your Tyrus Monocles, you go into your Tornado Trigger, and maybe a maybe a tension bow as well. It it does work. It works really well actually. The only problem is you don't have as much weapon power as before as when you go for Solar Blade, so you don't have that massive burst damage. I, I do like it against the Black Feather. You know Black Feather's gonna build Serpent's Mask as well. But, <coughs> pardon me. So just go for your own sustain on top of Lyra. And one really important thing to note this patch is you'd say, Oh Black Feather, just go Serpent's Mask Poison Shift and then uh, you counted the Lyra Sustain, you counted the Serpent's Mask from Black from Baron, perfect. But Serpent's Mask and Poison Shiv, the life still doesn't stack anymore. You only get 10%, you don't get 18%. So that's a really bad build, is going Serpent's Mask and Poison Shiv uh, in this patch. Ooh, and we see Official Hind going in with a Prime Directive. Or oh, uh, Blue Zitty going in with a Prime Directive onto Official Hind. Ion Cannon going to drop down onto Black Feather, who's trying to jump onto Def Q. And he looks like he's going to be able to get out there. He has full Broken Heart stacks, but Blue Zitty frontlining this fight. Might be able to pick up a kill onto Official Hind. Does open up a window for Def Q. And this is what I really like about the side of Impunity, that as well as having a good comp to react to the engage coming out from Elite 8 with that Lyra, and as I mentioned, the Bright Bulwark, uh, if used correctly, can really help negate that. They also have a good engage with the Alpha on the front line, and Baron just able to pop shots off through from the back line, and overall just liking the comp of Impunity much more. It's not to say that Elite 8 can't make the comp they have work, because they might be able to find those chances where Black Feather and Petal, if they're able to get onto the Baron uh, instantly, and as you said, if they need to win out the early game more or less, because if they let it go through to the late game as it is going now, it's definitely going to fall into Impunity's hands. So that's yeah, where I worry, and I think Def Q understood that, and that's another reason why to not just to go against a Black Feather, but your own sustain in lane, because you know that Pedal is going to want to always be looking for those opportunities to get on top of you. Yeah, the longer Baron can sustain for, the more damage Alpha can do with multiple Prime Directives in the team fight, and obviously he's going to use a Termination Protocol. Def Q could be out of position. Yeah, and we see Def Q does get caught out with a fair bit of damage, but the Bright Ball were going to hold the enemies off, and Blue City actually decided to go in, doesn't manage to get the Termination Protocol off before falling, and they are going to just fall to that pedal. Meanwhile, Black Feather diving deep under the turret. Def Q actually running away from his own turret to try to get out there, but will be caught up in the end, and it looks like Elite 8 might have that opportunity to turn things around now. Official Hyde trying to get a kill into QC, but he baits him and does manage to pull it home. But yes, yeah, slight mistake from uh, from Luke City, not using the ultimate in time. He used the Prime Directive, went in, and then tried to get another Core Charge stack. A nice Prime Directive hits Official Hyde as well. Yeah, he tried to get another Core Charge um, onto the Petal, but in doing so, did fall into Reboot without pro top tapping that ultimate. I don't think the community will mind too much that they lost that fight because they, they knew that they made mistakes. Baron as well was slightly out of position to start the fight. He went down to almost dead just from just from slightly poor positioning. And I was not expecting this build from him, Death Q. Serpent's Mask breaking point on Baron. Mm, definitely going for that sustained kind of fight you were talking about. Not the build you were expecting, however, but still going for that sustain and really looking for the longer engages especially when alpha is going to be on that front line as long as you're able to sit on the back line uncontested you should be fine but right now elite eight their goal is really to get that baron first just previous fight they were handed for alpha so they took it anyway yeah definitely it was if alpha puts herself into reboot next year you might as well secure that especially given how low baron was means that Baron couldn't chase you down. Sentry's going to be defeated by Official Hind first time nine minutes in. Alpha's a little bit annoyed by that, but I'm sure won't be too disheartened. The gold lead is swinging in favour of Elite 8 by about 1,000. They were behind, but now that's uh, push, pushing slightly ahead. It's not a snowball, but it is, it is a slight lead for them. Yes, it is a slight lead indeed. Uh, both teams still very close. Two kills to two and 20.5k on the side of Elite 8 over as to 19.7.
for the side of impunity so still a fairly close game and anyone's game at this point because impunity are only going to get stronger into this late game it can be said the same with the black feather and the pedal but they really rely right now on baron's squishiness to go through and pick him off whenever uh Christy isn't around and i think that you mentioned before impunity might not mind that previous fight because from here i'm sure they won't go for or they will try not to make those same mistakes but right now elite eight making full use of their aggression and that just i guess advantage that they had from the previous fight to now go and take as many objectives off the back of it as they could and there's going to be the gauntlet going down trapping blue city in there but everyone trying to run away from them they're just going to cut around them and now we'll be able to might not pick up the kill We'll see Han Yeager's, however, going under the turret, picking up a double kill. Just massive on this Black Feather right now. And meanwhile, Official Han was able to finish off Blue City after the reboot. Well, that was certainly unexpected from Elite Eight, turning it around, winning that fight so decisively. The fantastic trapped out inside Alpha without a reflex block until now. Just picked one up and um, tried to prime directive onto the healing, healing, healing tree. In. But then the gauntlet just trapped him and stopped him from being able to go over that wall, which was a smart play. And also, Hunyagers, with his Atlas Pauldron, able to stop DefQ dealing a significant portion of damage. He picked up 20 breaking point stacks near the end of that fight as well, because he started on Alpha. The, the members of Impunity were slightly split. Alpha obviously trying to steal the gold mine by himself. And now they're looking for another fight. Elite 8 feel like they can win this. They're only now 5k gold ahead just after getting that gold mine and, uh, and the ace. Well, Elite Eight have been doing a good job of taking those objectives uh, continuously after that previous fight and kind of continuing to push that window of opportunity. They really understand that if they're able to close out this early game, that or at least make good progress in this early game, that it will mean they have a more of a fighting chance into the late game. And it's surprising, this might be the end of the Alpha 100% win streak for today. Yeah, it might be Alpha building up some nice core charge stacks though on those uh, minions and Petal has lost all the stacks at the moment, which is an interesting build. Alpha has not been able to pick up the Dragon's Eye yet. The Sentry is there for Impunity. They are here. They are ready to defend this final life of the Sentry. Death Gugan try and steal away that tree and not able to get it. I think that was secured by Petal. And now Elite Eight just rotating wherever they want, whenever they want. And Impunity have realized, right, we, we need to focus. We need to stick together and we need to take a good fight on our terms, not on their terms. Yeah, definitely. And we see that Elite Eight being rather cautious here, not showing themselves in the lane just yet. They want to get an understanding of what Impunity are doing as well because they know they cleared out the whole jungle of Impunity. So right now, Blue City can't be doing much other than hanging around with the rest of the team. And now Elite Eight, knowing that Baron went back and that they're not going to push through, are going to clear out this wave. But whether they're going to push for more, uh, that is the question. As we see Official Hein and Anime Save Me going down to the Crystal Sentry, and they managed to get the elimination on it. As you mentioned, it, is the, it was the final life for that Crystal Sentry. And now Deputy. we do see the pressure coming through by Elite Eight. Deku almost caught out, but uh, he's going to jump this away. Luxty's able to pick up his Dragon's Eye, which is a massive power spike for Alpha, but is it too late? Jungle once again cleared out by Elite 8. That was slightly poor timing from Punity. Luxty thought he might be able to sneak home for that Dragon's Eye before being able to farm his jungle. I think Punity needs to take a fight. They're not in a bad position. Uh, as long as Baron stays on the back line, Alpha deals the brunt of the damage, then they could be okay, but this is a good time for Punity to try and force a fight. Uh, and they don't. They try to get the Imperial Sigil in there after scout trapping it, but they really haven't been around any objectives soon enough. Elite 8 with great map control and vision control overall haven't even really touched their own jungle. Official Hind still managing to sit ahead of Blue City, however, because always doing the rotations through Impunity's jungle is, seems to be enough to keep them ahead. You'd think that maybe Elite 8 could go and get more out of this, but they decide their best to stick together as a team and continue moving as a unit because they don't want to give up any mistakes over to the side of impunity either because they surely will still be respecting that impunity have a chance to turn this around just as you said before impunity really not looking for a fight however elite eight just going after objective and objective landing the gauntlet and they're going to go in there's black feather on the back 
but whether they're going to back out now, looks like it could be so, and they're fine with that. I mean, Elite 8 now at 35.8k over to 27.6, really far in the lead, and constantly clearing out the jungle from impunity, meaning there's going to be no more progression on Blue City for this outfit, really stalling out that late game power spike. Yeah, this is the problem with what Impunity are trying to do is, I said, uh, when they were 4k go behind, they fight, go for a fight, take it on their terms, not on Elite 8's terms. And now they went, no, 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 we'll just wait. And now Elite 8 are 8k gold ahead, pushing towards 9,000 gold ahead now with uh, taking that jungle away. So now Impunity are in a much worse position than if they fought a bit earlier. So they've got to try and steal this Kraken, what's going to do the play? And it doesn't look like they're able to. Elite 8 are going to secure that. That's Blackfeather jumping onto the Baron instantly. Pale going to be able to pick up a kill. Blue Zitty goes into Termination Protocol, but is left surrounded by Elite 8 who are going to get them before they even manage to get back out of the Infinite Reboot. And Queasy, the last one standing for Impunity. Meanwhile, Kraken soon to be pushing in. And we see Official Hind able to cancel the recall. And they are going to push Queasy further back into that base. They might even just go for this first turret here to help the Kraken push and really make sure they secure it with this first Kraken. I mean, only 16 minutes in at this point. Elite 8, ever since that first fight that they won, they started going off the back of that on objective, objective, and taking everything away from Impunity here. The only thing remaining to do is push in with this Kraken. There's going to be the Gauntlet to go in. They still have the Fountain for Elite 8. Not wanting to use it just yet, but they're going to have to as Han is going fairly low to this Baron, but might win out the duel, and it looks like wow. he will just barely. He gets the shutdown, but Queasy going to... Uh, Queasy probably getting that shutdown onto the Black Feather, but Arden still alive going onto this Crystal with the help of Kraken. Should be enough damage. Anime saved me just buying time for the Kraken at this point, distracting them, and we can see that mm. even yeah. by game the Ace, I don't think they have the damage to take this Kraken. No, they don't. And one more, two more the hits. Alpha, the Alpha win streak has been defeated by what we all thought was an inferior draft. In the end, it was a not a good early game. Alpha got the early game lead, got the first blood, but it was just a mid-game uh, a, a mistake from Impunity, an out-position Baron, another mistake with out-position Alpha, and Elite 8 just turned the snowball around and ended up winning the game. So well played in the end to Elite 8, they, they pushed their advantage really well, took the backs, took the jungle, kept taking sentry 